Modern schools of jurisprudence, uh, various uh, scholars and various schools of thought in jurisprudence believe dif uh, on different sources of law. For example, in uh, ancient political philosophy, Plato said that the law is the uh, command of philosopher king. So he believed on the sovereign command as a source of law. While well, Aristotle uh, don't believe so, and uh, when well, Aristotle say that the law is actually law actually came from uh, the traditions and the contemporary political conditions. So uh, Aristotle was giving more preference to the wisdom of past instead of the wisdom of philosopher king. And in modern times as well, there are different schools of jurisprudence who believe that uh, the source of law is from different sources. Uh, there are basically four or five uh, different uh, mo uh, schools of jurisprudence in modern times. They include the analytical school, philosophical school, and uh, historical, and then uh, sociological. So let's see one by one. The first one is the analytical school. Analytical school uh, think our analytical school explain purely the legalistic aspect of law and regard it as the command of sovereign. They said that the law is the exposition of sovereignty of state, which is consciously made by an authority. Law is not derived from the past traditions and customs. Rather, law is made by the sovereignty of state. It is the sovereign who design laws and uh, uh, and uh, it is not developed from some uh, past tradition rather it's developed consciously at certain time by using his authority or his authority so law is an exposition of sovereignty of state which is consciously developed by an authority uh, authority body uh, so the analytical school is developed under platonic theory as platonic uh, according to the platonic theory law is uh, the command of sovereign and they also believe that the law is the command of sovereign and it's consciously developed at certain time and there's always coercion at the back of law the coercion is important because coercion without coercion people will not follow law and law become useless so if you want to make law active and useful so that the people are bound to follow that law if we want to want practical implementation of law we need coercion at the back of the law so they were also saying that the coercion is always at the back of the law and because of this coercion people are following the law Professor Hollane said that dealing law is dealing with external behavior, having no concern with underlying motives. Uh, the analytical school of thought, uh, thought or analytical school of law believe or they propagate only the legal source of law. Uh, and the next school is the historical school. They said that law is the manifestation of customary way of law, life. Legal concepts grow in form of customs and traditions in society, and these transformed these customs and traditions transformed into laws when formally recognized and enforced through state machinery. In every society, there are customs, traditions that people are following since. Uh, decades and centuries and with the passage of time those customs and traditions uh, become the habitual uh, habitual rules in that society and when uh, the government machinery back those habitual rules they become law the major exponents of this school are sir henry sir Frederick, paul Ock, and savagny uh, they said that rules that ultimately get the shape of law are nourished in society for a long period and pass through evolutionary phases before convert into law. Law can be well apprehended only after exhaustive study of its historical stages along with the economic, social and cultural environment of that, uh, that society. So if you want to understand the actual source of law, you need a, an exhaustive study of the historical stages through which law passes 
within the economic and social cultural setup of that society and then you will be able to understand the source of law and the laws came from historical customs traditions and when the state uh, back those uh, customs and traditions those customs and traditions become law they do not undermine the legal source as they believe that the uh, uh, state backing is important for law and but what they did is that they put more emphasis on historical legacy this school of thought purely reflect conservative and traditional mode of thinking and according to this school of thought or by using this concept of uh, the school of jurisprudence laws become static because they believe that the laws and uh, comes from customs and traditions and they don't change uh, early which uh, which make laws static and outdated and the next school of thought is the philosophical school of thought they uh, underestimate customary forces or sorry contemporary uh, contemporary forces uh, the philosophical school uh, present an idealistic view of law by logic and analogy uh, according to them a philosopher at certain time without using any contemporary contemporary force or custom or tradition create an ideal situation at an utopian situation and set some ideal rules that become law so the law of, uh, they uh, say that the law of nature could be discovered through the application of reasoning and analogy their uh, system of law is uh, an ideal one but with no relevance to the contemporary political scene they create wonderful laws but they have no relevance to the contemporary political scene so we can say that the philosophical school create some fictional laws that could not be implemented in real life uh, but two major positive things that we can deduce from this school of thought that they change those outdated laws that were created by the historical school of thought and not only they change those uh, outdated laws but they provide some moral justification for changing of those laws as well the next school is the comparative approach comparative ap approach is in fact a wider and more comprehensive form of historical approach they said that if uh, the law laws came from the uh, a from a thorough uh, study and comparison of historical school and the contemporary political conditions so uh, the study of all contemporary and historical schools in, is indispensable for the understanding the true nature of law they uh, since they adopted a comparative approach of historical and contemporary conditions so they this provide a generalization to the jurisprudence and they provide future guidance for the legislation as well and what they did is they they do a more or a maximum utilization of all related disciplines that are related to the jurisprudence and the true content of law in relation to environment setting and they broaden the scope of research methodology in law their approach says that uh, the laws came into being by the comparison of historical approaches on the historical schools of thought and the contemporary conditions by comparing both the historical and contemporary conditions laws can be formulated the sociological school of thought the major uh, exponents of this thought are Duggett from France, Krabi, Holland, Justice Holmes, America, and Professor Lasky, a British professor. They are the major exponents of the sociological school of jurisprudence. They, uh, although they, uh, they are on different points in details, but they are common. They provide a common percept of this school of thought. 
they said that the law represents sociological environment and this can be better apprised and analyzed with reference to their outcome in every society in every uh, culture there are in there are certain customs that those people are following and since those uh, the people follow those uh, traditions in the society habitually and they uh, with the passage of time those uh, traditional values which people act habitually become law when they got government support or government backing to that so they said that the laws came into being from the traditions and traditional values that are practiced in different societies uh, different schools of uh, jurisprudence said or to explain different sources of law in fact law came into being by different sources the law cannot be formulated just on the basis of historical approach or comparative approach or sociological approach rather law can be a uh, law came into being from all these approaches law came from traditions and customs law is created on contemporary conditions law came into being from the uh, traditional values that are present in different societies so in fact law came from different sources i i are from historical from contemporary and from sociological sources thank you for joining tech care goodbye